Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to show you that that one thing, that one vision, that one idea that you live for, that you put all your energy and hours and thought into, that one thing could also be that one thing that is sucking all your energy off, taking all your motivation, ripping off everything that makes you you. And so INFJ, I want to show you what an unhealthy fixation with introverted intuition can lead to if it is at the expense of everything else that you are and everything else that makes you happy and everything else that you need to be a full functional healthy human being. Okay, so fun topic here today. What I've found is that introverted intuition uh, or the obsession with the one idea or the one thing or the one project is uh, something deeply admirable. Honestly, introverted intuition is fascinating and your ability to focus on something is incredible. Your ability to hone in on something and to give your all into something is something that is worthy of admiration. Honestly, that. The introverted intuitives uh, drive to finish or materialize their vision in the real world has been covered in so many different works of fiction and so many movies and it is something that we admire but it is also something that we <laughs> kind of look down upon as a crazy eccentricity. What INFJs do and what INTJs do, it can be something very healthy, but it can also be something deeply unhealthy. And it can be something extremely eccentric. INFJs and INTJs are people that find it very easy to focus and to let go of everything outside of that scope. We put on our hat and the only thing we see is that one thing and everything else is hidden from us. We don't recognize opportunities in our life. We don't recognize new things that happen around us. We don't see uh, people or relationships or friends or people around us that mean something to us. We don't see or think about or recognize anything but that one thing. And that's uh, both a fascinating trait and something that can cause deep isolation, loneliness and uh, feelings of, um, yeah, madness. So what I want you to ask yourself today is, is my fixation something healthy or is it time to let go? I believe that letting go is one of the most important lessons for an INFJ, but also probably one of the most difficult, and that's probably why you already feel like clicking away this video. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to consider giving up on your vision or your core goal in life, because it's going to be everything. It's going to be the one thing that will make you one day happy, you know. One day when you reach this goal, when you had this happen to you, you're going to be so happy and so at peace and full, finally fully at harmony. This goal you built up in your head is going to be incredible and so how could you give up on it? Giving up on it would mean giving up on future happiness. It would be giving up on your purpose. Without that, there is nothing to live for. There is no nothing besides that one thing, right? Uh, well, I'm here to tell you that the one time I was able to let go, that was also the time when um, things started to open up for me. And that was also uh, the time where I could finally open up to my true purpose. I believe that most INFJs, they are born with this strong concept of what they have to do quite early in life. Like you realize truly early in life that, oh, this is what I'm meant to do. And this is something that I will do. This is my purpose. This is who I am. You know, and you realize it quite early. But I don't believe that the first purpose that you discover is going to be the purpose of your life. The first purpose that you found, the thing you go back to when you were a kid, that one thing that you thought, this was my purpose, this was my dream, this was what I was meant to have. That's not your true purpose, it's not your true vision, it is just the first thing that you put your telescope to. And here it is. 
INFJs and INTJs, they are like people looking through a telescope and they put their telescope to one particular star in the sky. And they have said that this is the star I'm going to reach. But a lot of the time, INFJs and INTJs, they make one mistake. They settle too early on the first star that they see and they decide this star is my purpose. This first star that I see on the sky, this very big one that I see very far in the distance, the very one that I looked at most, that was the one I was meant to discover. That was the purpose I was meant to have. A lot of the time that's not the case and the first purpose that you had were, was only your training purpose. That was your first purpose for when you were a kid. It was the first thing you to train towards and it was practice for the day you met and saw your true purpose. But if you're still in your uh, 30s and you're still looking at that same star and you're still obsessing about that star, uh, maybe it's time to let go. And um, now I'm going to show you some ways that you can do to let go and to open up to the idea of letting go. Or maybe you should, should you get go in the first place? Like, uh, let me talk about if you should let go or not. I believe that you need to let go of your purpose if your purpose is killing you. And that first thing, that's very important. My first purpose was killing me. It was driving me to a burnout. It left me without any energy, without any friends. It left me in my early 20s dead inside, really with nothing. It had taxed me of all my energy. It's taken away everything that made me me. Everything that was special about me, everything that I liked about myself was gone because I was so fixated on that first purpose. And so letting go of that purpose, that was very difficult for me. I kept trying, even after I hit the burnout, even after I was done, I kept trying to gain that back, trying to find that star again. Where was it again? And I saw it somewhere on the sky, but I don't know where it is anymore. And I don't know how to get there anymore. And I, I, I was so far, but now I'm all the way back to the beginning and now I don't know how to get back to where I was anymore. So, The first thing about the purpose is that your purpose is not supposed to kill you. What is the second thing about the, your purpose? Well, the second thing is your purpose should never have caused you to compromise who you are. Compromising who you are is truly just setting the stones for killing yourself. It's just uh, uh, setting the stones for, you know, setting steps in motion that will cause you to feel lost and estranged from yourself. The more you have to compromise yourself to fit with your purpose, the more likely that your purpose isn't it. Your purpose is who you were born to be, who everything was set in motion for you to become. Your purpose is that one star that uh, when you set your eyes on it, you feel a sense of kinship with it and you know this is who I was meant to be, this is what I was meant to do. You feel with it when you look at the star that I have everything I need right here to make this happen. I have everything I need to succeed in this vision because I am already this vision. I am already that person. So the second rule is your purpose should never have you compromise your authenticity or who you are. The third thing is your purpose should not be somebody else's purpose. And I'm looking to you people pleasers here. Your purpose will not be to help another person find their purpose. Your purpose is not that one thing you discovered while you were giving yourself fully to other people. It was not that thing where you did searching for positive feedback or compliments or reassurance. It was that not that one thing that made you feel needed by others. Your purpose is something that fills you up from the inside. So you won't discover your purpose trying to do things for other people. Fourth, and now we're in the process of just realizing that, okay, we might need to let go of our purpose. We need, might need to find something new. Uh, the second question is, but what if there is nothing else for me out there? 
what if that was my purpose and there will never be a purpose for me again? And what if I will never find something that I that speaks to me the way that spoke to me? What if I will never have any cause or ideal or goal that will truly hit me the way that did? Hmm. I think um, when you have that, the first thing you need to do is just uh, look up at the stars and think, how many stars are there? Billions, right? Unlimited stars. There's more than enough stars for everyone out there. And how could you think that there was only one star for you out there? How could you think that there would be only one purpose for you there? What if you're meant to have multiple purposes in your life? How could you uh, think that this is the only thing for you? The only way you could think that is because you've been cut off for so long. Your eyes have been closed. You've been stared so blindly. You've been so obsessed that you just haven't looked around anymore. And uh, so if you were worried about that, start looking around. Just surf the web, just Google randomly, just open YouTube videos, just do what INFPs do, you know, where you search in Wikipedia and you end up somewhere about aliens, you know. There is a Wikipedia page for everyone and there is a random connection to be made and there are patterns to be discovered everywhere. So, um, the first hesitation is, I can't let go because there is, uh, because I fear that there is nothing else for me. And that is a foolish fear, but of course it's a fear nonetheless. The second thing when you're opening to the thought of letting go is uh, also recognizing that you have nothing to lose. If you have a vision, if this is your purpose, if this is what you were meant to do, you will find your way back. If this was truly the thing you were meant to be, that this thing, then you can afford to let go for a second, for a week, for a month, just to see how it feels. That means, yes, you can take a break. You can go and do something else. You can go and see where else you're meant to be. You can go pace yourself. You can look out of your books for a second. You can uh, look into the forest. You can open up random conversations with strangers you never talked to before. You can open up to new things in your life. And no worries, if this purpose was meant to be your purpose, you will find new perspective, you will reframe, and you'll find your way right back where you were meant to be, right on path, with new inspiration and new energy and new perspectives. And you'll see this purpose that you were looking at before, but you'll see it with more liberty and more freedom and a greater sense that, wow, uh, no matter where I go, this keeps coming back to me and this keeps feeling real to me. So if you're doubting it, but what if I'm letting go of something real? Don't worry. If it's real, it's meant to be. You'll come back to it. And then uh, let's move on to the question of after you let go. Letting go is difficult and so Allow yourself to feel sad because what you're experiencing is loss. No matter what you're letting go of, if it's a relationship or a project or a um, theory that you've had in your head that you were so fascinated with, letting go feels sad and empty and it feels like loss and it feels horrible and, you know, it feels difficult and you, you're you not meant to just uh, cut yourself away from that experience and to go... Uh, full uh, superman and pretend that it didn't hurt you and it didn't matter and didn't affect you. Of course it will affect you. Losing something, no matter what it is, if it's been a big part of your life, if it's been uh, several hours every day for the past few years, if it's been something that's really important to you, it's gonna hurt and it's okay. And take your time to feel that hurt and to be aware and mindful of your feelings. Your feelings could be a sign that yeah, this meant something to you and this was meant for be you and this was the real thing for you. But it could also just be sadness at having lost something. Not the core purpose, not the true purpose, but just having lost something, no matter what it was and no how it, important it was. You know, uh, no matter how boring it really was, no matter how difficult it was, no matter how much it hurt you, 
uh, it was still something that you did and that is not there anymore. And it's so important to take time and reflect on that loss and just accept whatever you're feeling about it. The other part is um, letting yourself have uh, fun, you know, because you can just give yourself away to the emptiness that I don't have that anymore. It's gone. It's not there anymore. I don't have anything anymore. It's all away, you know, but you're meant to, while you're meant to take time and to be sad and to mourn what you've lost, you're also allowed to fill yourself with new things and to open up new conversations. And at the beginning, this might not feel like anything. It might just feel like you're just putting yourself out there. And yeah, maybe it's nothing, you know, but um, the conversations you start up now, you know, those uh, are meant to be there too. So you're, that's a part of the healing, you know, the moving on part is part of the healing. So uh, it's a part that you must allow yourself as well. It's, uh, if you're, so full in the process of loss that you're not moving, not eating, not doing anything anymore, you know, now then you're also not truly letting go. You're still holding on. So find a balance, uh, dedicate half the day to crying about what you've lost, and the other half to enjoying and uh, or trying to enjoy the new things that you can find, the new interesting things in your life that uh, could mean something and could be cool, maybe in the future, who knows? And uh, third, you know, talk to other people and ask them about what they are doing and what they're interested in and what they're passionate about and what gives them meaning in their lives. You know, look up from yourself, from your own projects for a bit and let yourself be curious about others, you know, because uh, it's inspiring to hear about people who are inspired and it's cool to hear about people who have a passion and it's fascinated to hear about people that have a purpose and maybe they can awaken something in you or make you feel something or make you connect to something or uh, remind you of what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. You're doing what you're doing because like them you want to find your purpose and your true purpose and your true one thing, your true one idea, the one ring to rule them all. I mean the one thing that will truly uh, be the thing. And I'm not going to say complete you because it's not going to complete you. Your core project, your core idea, your core purpose is uh, never going to complete you. But it should at least make you feel better about yourself. It should at least make you feel happy. It should at least give you something, you know. It shouldn't take away from you. It should give to you. Your one thing should be something that gives to you. Your one thing should be something that lets you be yourself and allows you a method to express yourself. And your one thing should be something that you can talk about and open up to and connect with other people about. And so find that thing. Find that thing that is going to be truly real. Thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, feel free to share in your comments, well, in my comments, <laughs> in our comments. Uh, something that you let go of and what happened after. Thanks for watching and have a nice weekend.